the measurement of bacterial growth can be divided into three. The first one is the determination of number of cells and it consists of direct method and indirect method. Direct method is by microscopy or by using an electronic particle counter and indirect method is by the colony count method. Second category is the determination of cell mass. In this the direct method is by weighing or measuring the cell nitrogen and the indirect method is by measuring the turbidity. And the third category is the determination of cell activity and it is done by a indirect method and it is related to the degree of biochemical activity to the size of the population. The first with, uh, method is the determination of number of cells directly by the breed method or the direct microscopic method. In this, a non-volume of cell suspension, it is 0.01 ml, is spread uniformly over a glass slide within a specific area that is 1 square centimeter. The smear is then fixed by heating, stained, examined under oil immersion lens and the cells are counted. Cells in a few microscopic fields are counted because it is not possible to scan the entire area of smear. The counting of total number of cells is determined by calculating the total number of microscopic fields per 1 square centimeter area of the smear. The total number of cells can be counted with the help of the following equation. In this, we can take the area of microscopic field is equal to 5 r square, where r is equal to 0 0.08 millimeter in the case of oil immersion lens. Therefore, area of the microscopic field under the oil immersion lens is equal to pi r square and after substituting we get it as 0 0.02 square millimeter. Area of the smear per square centimeter is equal to 100 square millimeter. Then the number of microscopic field is equal to 100 by 0 0.02 and we will get it as 5000. So, therefore, the number of cells per square centimeter is equal to average number of microbes per microscopic field into 5000. Next direct method for the determination of uh, number of cells include uh, the counting chamber method or the petrov hose chamber. It's easy, inexpensive and a quick method. It is uh, useful for counting both eukaryotes and prokaryotes. For eukaryotes we can use hemocytometer and for prokaryotes we can use petrov hose counter. It can be more easily counted if they are stained or if phase contrast or fluorescent microscope is employed. It cannot distinguish living from dead cells and sometimes very small cells are missed. It is calculated taking the count of number of bacteria per unit area of grid and multiplying it by a conversion factor. And it depends on the chamber volume and sample dilution used. Petrophosa chamber or hemocytometer is ruled with squares of known area. It is so constructed that a film of non depth can be introduced between the slide and the cover slip. The volume of the liquid overlaying each square is accurately known. Next one is the electronic counter. It's an electronic instrument also known as the culture counter and is used for direct enumeration of cells in a suspension. The instrument is capable of accurately counting thousands of cells in a few seconds. And the suspending fluid must be free of inanimate objects like dust. It contains two compartments which contains an electrically conductive solution. An orifice of 10 to 30 micrometer in diameter connects the compartment. And in this, the microbial suspension is forced through small hole or orifice or capillary tube 
and the diameter of this tube is so microscopic that it allows only one cell to pass at a time. And the movement of this microbe through orifice or capillary tube impacts electric current that flows through orifice. That is, the electrical resistance between the compartments increases or the conductivity drops. And this generates an electrical signal that is countered automatically. And few of the advantages of this technique is that it gives accurate results with larger cells and is extensively used in hospitals to count RBC and WBC and it is also a rapid technique. Some of the disadvantages that it requires sophisticated electronic equipment and sometimes this orifice may be clogged. It is not possible to make viable count because even the debris particles will be counted as microorganisms. So there it came to the end of direct counting methods. Now let's see the indirect method to determine the number of cells by plate count. Viable cells are the one that is able to divide and form offsprings. And in most cell counting situation, these are the cells we are most interested in. For these purposes, we can use a viable counting method. To do this, we typically determine the number of cells in a sample capable of forming colonies on a suitable agar medium. For this reason, the viable count is also called a plate count method. The assumption made in the viable counting procedure is that each viable cell can grow and divide to yield one colony. Thus, colony numbers are a reflection of cell numbers. There are at least two ways of performing a plate count, the spread plate method and the pore plate method. In our previous sessions, we have already mentioned about the spread plate and the pore plate method. An appropriately diluted cell suspension is introduced into a petri dish. Each organism trapped in or on a neutron agar medium will multiply and produce a visible colony. The number of colonies are the same as the number of viable cells inoculated into the medium. In pore plate method, 1 ml of the sample is taken and is inoculated into the empty plate. An appropriate melted agar medium is poured into the petri dish and is thoroughly mixed with inoculum by rotating the plate. After solidification of the medium, the plates are inverted and incubated for 18 to 24 hours and the colonies can be seen uh, grown on in and on solidified media. Whereas in the case of spread plate method, 0.1 ml of the sample is taken and is inoculated onto the plate containing solidified medium. And the inoculum is spread over surface evenly with the help of a L rod. And after incubation for 18 to 24 hours, the colonies will be seen grown on surface of the medium alone. Microorganism will grow both on the surface and within the medium. Colonies that grow within the medium generally are small in size and may be confluent. The few that grow on the agar surface are the same size and appearance as those on a straight plate. Each colony is carefully counted and each colony represents a colony forming unit or CF2. The number of microorganisms present in the particular test sample is determined using this formula that is CFU per ml is equal to number of colonies on the plate into dilution factor by sample taken. For accurate counts, the optimum count should be within the range of 30 to 300 colonies per plate. To ensure a countable plate, a series of dilution should be plated. Some of the advantages of uh, plate count method is that it is used to, for the estimation of bacterial population in milk, water, food and other materials and it also counts only living cells. And the disadvantage is that uh, since the suspension contains different kind of microbial species, all of them will not grow in one medium. 
The next indirect method for the determination of number of cells is by the membrane filter method. A suspension of microorganisms, uh, as in water or air, is filtered through a millipore filter membrane. The organisms are retained on the filter disc, and this disc is then placed in a petri dish containing a suitable medium. The plates are incubated and colonies are observed on the membrane surface. A large volume of the sample can be analyzed using this method and various types of microorganism can be detected by using selective medias in the plate. With certain dyes, it can distinguish living from dead cells. Next is the determination of cell mass. Uh, first, we will look into the direct methods that include dry weight measurement and cell nitrogen measurement. In the measurement of dry weight of cells, the sample is centrifuged and filtered and the residues on the pellet is washed a number of times to remove all the erinaceous matter. The residue is then dried and weighed. Commonly, it is used for measuring growth of molds in certain phases of industrial work. It is a rapid and easy method to do, uh, but some of the disadvantages include it is non-sensitive and used only with den dense suspension. It is not very accurate and it does not give you cell numbers or increase in mass. It cannot distinguish between live and dead cells and must work within certain absorbency. Uh, the one method that is coming under the dry weight measurement is the packed cell volume or PCE. It describes the volume occupied by a cell pellet after centrifugation. It is used to determine cell mass and after centrifugation, the bacterial cell will sediment in the order of their age. The eldest cells occupy the lower end of the tube and the youngest cells towards the top. The PCV is calculated by measuring the volume of sediment that is Vs and the total volume of the culture that is Vt. It is usually uh, used to determine the red blood cells mass and after centrifugation RBC sedimentation in the tubes will occur in order of the cell age. Microbial load in a suspension can also be measured in PCV or packed cell volume. Next method is the measurement of cell nitrogen. The major constant of cell material is protein and nitrogen is the characteristic constant of protein. So a bacterial population or cell group can be measured in terms of cell nitrogen. Here the cells are harvested, washed and then the cell nitrogen is estimated by Chemical analysis. Some of the problems associated with this method is that it's a laborious process and it can be only applicable for concentrated population. Next is the determination of cell mass by indirect method and it includes turbidometric method. It's a quick and efficient method of estimating the number of bacteria in a liquid medium and is used to measure the turbidity or cloudiness of a culture and translates this measurement into cell numbers. This method of enumeration is fast and is usually preferred when a large number of cultures are to be counted. For this, a spectrophotometer or calorimetry can be used for turbidometric measurements of the cell mass. A spectrophotometer is used to determine turbidity or the cloudiness by measuring the amount of light that passes through a suspension of cells. So, more cells is equal to more turbidity and more turbidity means less light passing through the suspension. However, the culture to be measured must be dense enough to register some turbidity on the instrument. Since cells are actual objects, instead of dissolved substances, cells scatter light and a rapid and quite useful method of estimating cell numbers based on this property is turbidity. A suspension of cells looks cloudy to the eye because cells scatter light passing through the suspension. The more cells that are present, the more light is scattered and hence the more turbid the suspension. What is actually assessed in a turbidometric measurement is total cell mass. 
However, cell mass is proportional to cell number. Turbidity can be used as a measure of cell numbers and can also be used to follow an increase in cell numbers of a growing culture. The amount of light absorbed or scattered is proportional to the mass of cells in the path of light. Increase in cell mass is proportional to the increase in cell number. When a beam of light is passed through a bacterial suspension, there will be reduction in the amount of light transmitted due to scattering. The measurement of the reduction in the transmitted light is a measure of bacterial mass present. The absorbency is read by calorimeter. Absorbency is measured by finding the ratio between intensity of light entering the suspension that is I0 and intensity of light that get transmitted by the suspension that is I. This turbidometric method is accurate and rapid method to estimate the cell number in unit volume. Turbidity but measures both living as well as dead cells, so it comes as a disadvantage in this technique. And also it is not possible to measure cultures that are deeply colored or contain suspended materials other than cells. Nephlometry is a more sensitive instrument for measuring scattered light. In nephlometry, the light sensing device is arranged at right angles to the scattered light. And the greater sensitivity of nephlometry is due to its measuring scattered light rather than residual and scattered light. As the light passes through the suspension, two kinds of light rays are produced. Direct rays and deflected or scattered rays. The direct rays are absorbed by a light shield as they are not measured by nephlometer. The scattered rays which undergo scattering to an extent of 90 degree are sensed by a phototube. It is kept at right angles to the sample tube. The amount of scattered light that comes out of the sample suspension is directly proportional to the concentration of the sample compound. And the turbidity is measured in terms of NTU that is Neflo turbidity unit. The nephlometer instrument essentially consists of a light source, a sample tube to hold turbid suspension and a photocell. Light source is a tungsten lamp, the light rays from which are focused onto the sample tube holding the suspension to be analyzed. And it also consists of a light shield or the transmitted light detector for absorbing the direct rays. And the scattered rays which undergo scattering to an extent of 90 degree are sensed by the photo tube which is kept at right angles to the sample tube. And there is also back scatter detector and forward scatter detector in the instrument. Next method is the determination of cell activity. It consists of indirect method of estimating bacterial numbers by measuring the metabolic activity of the population for example acid production or oxygen consumption, nutrient utilization, waste production, pH etc. Uh, the assumption is that the amount of acid produced or oxygen consumed under specific condition and during a fixed period of time is proportional to the magnitude of bacterial population. It's like uh, the amount of acid produced is proportional to the magnitude of the cell suspension and the measurement of acid or any other end product is a very indirect approach to the measurement of growth and is applicable only in special circumstances. We can also use specific enzymes that can be assayed to measure the cell growth.